Hello, my brothers. Hello, my sisters. Another beautiful, blessed day today. Just to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now, just to give Him the thanks. Just to give Him the praise. And also give Him the glory. Because at the end of the day, my brothers, my sisters, it's all about Jesus. And it'll always be about Jesus. That's why I give him the thanks. That's why I give him the praise. That's why I give him the glory. That's why I magnify and I shout out his holy name for who he is and what he has done and what he is doing in our life each and every day. And I know in, in certain times, in certain days, we feel like that God has forgotten about us. We feel like that God is overlooking us. But in the midst of all that, my brothers and my sisters, he's doing the opposite. He's working behind the scene. He is preparing everything that we are asking for in his name, everything that we are praying for, everything that we have our faith in and our belief and our trust in. We just have to do our part just to hold on this a little bit more longer. And I know right now it's frustrating. And I know right now you are, you are praying with frustration. You are fighting with frustration. But if you weren't praying with frustration or fighting with frustration, it wouldn't even matter to you. But by you praying with it and fight with it, that means that you want it. And God, he sees that. He sees that, my brothers. He sees that, my sisters. It's like that thorn that's stuck in the side of your hip. It's like that thorn that's stuck in the side of your leg. It don't matter how many times that you try to remove it, it still stays right there. That's the indication that you know that the pain that you're going through. So if you're not going through no pain, that means it's not personal to you. But the pain and the affliction that you're going through, the pain and the affliction that you're facing right now, is only letting you know how strong and how determined that you're wanting this and how bad that you're dependent and waiting on Jesus because it has come personal to you. Your praise has become personal. Your worship has become personal. By you seeking Jesus, has become personal. Your faith, your trust, and your hope has become personal with Jesus. When you get to that point, you are already won, my brothers and my sisters. And even though you probably didn't realize, when you get to that point, you have already won. Victory is already yours. Let's do our part continue to hold on to Jesus. Let's do our part continue to open our mouth and give him the thanks and give him the praise and give him the glory no matter what. And say, Jesus, right now, things not looking good for us, but we still trust in you. We still got our faith in you. We still got our hope in you. But most of all, we're going to give you the thanks, praise, and glory. We're always going to magnify and shout out your holy name. We're going to boast about your holy name. We're still going to be faithful. We're still going to be obedient, even though it's looking ugly right now. Because praise is what we do. So, Father God, you can count on some of us. Because some of us, we really pour our heart to you, Jesus. Some of us, Father God, we really cry to you every day and also every night. So, Father God, look out for the ones who really point their heart out to you, who's on their knees every day, who's on their knees every night. Let your ear be attentive towards our ear. Let our prayer hit your heart, Father God, tonight, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you is around the world. Father God, listen to our prayer right now today. Open up your heart and open up your ears to us right now today. And we want to say thank you in Jesus' holy mighty name. Amen. I would love to give a shout out right now today to all my brothers, all my sisters right now around the world, around the globe, around the universe right now today. I want to thank y'all guys so much for taking y'all time out out of y'all busy schedule right now today to be part of today's service. Thank y'all guys so much for always putting Jesus first place. Thank y'all for always seeking him. Thank y'all for always praising him and also worshiping him. Y'all could have been doing anything today. You could have been part of anything today. But you took your time out to be part of today's service. You took your time out to listen to another word. And also receive another message today. Thank y'all so much. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, and how blessed I am for every last one of y'all. Thank y'all so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm always going to let y'all know that I thank y'all so much. Amen? Amen. So if I'm thankful, I'm grateful, I'm honored, and I'm blessed, how much more do you think our Heavenly Father God is? He is so thankful right now because y'all God's faithfulness and your obedience that you have towards Him and His ministry, He is telling me right now today to let you know that He is doing a new thing right now in your life. It's because of your faithfulness. It's because of your obedience. It's because you prayed and you never gave up. 
Not because you done everything right, because you didn't give up. He said, now I got to come in and do a new thing right now. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, it's a time under heaven for everything. It was a time when things was not looking right. It was a time when you was in that dark, ugly place. It was a time when you didn't see light. It was a time when you didn't think that your train was even moving. But God was still behind the scene. He was the engineer. The train was moving. You just didn't know that the train was moving. He said, now I'm doing a new thing. But he said, I got to do it now. He said, I got to do a new thing now in your life, in your finances, your health, your dreams, your business right now, your ministry right now. He said, I got to do a new thing because of your faithfulness. He said, I got to do a new thing because of your obedience that you had towards me. He said, I can't do it tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. He said, I can't do it next week neither because next week is not promised. I can't do it next month or next year because next month, next year is not promised neither. He said, I have to do a new thing, but I got to do it right now. Get ready to receive your phone call right now, your email right now. Your text message right now, your blessing right now, your breakthrough right now, your anointing right now, your double portion right now, your deliverance right now, your open doors right now. Get ready to receive favor right now. Get ready to receive your miracle right now. Get ready for Jesus to move in your life right now, my brothers, my sisters, every young man, every young lady, because Jesus is doing a new thing, but he's doing a new thing right now. If you believe that Jesus is doing a new thing right now, you need to give him thanks for it right now. You need to give him praise for it right now. And you need to give him the glory because that's what exactly what he's doing. He's doing a new thing. In the month of July, in the year 2019, I'm speaking this thing to an existence. I'm prophesying over right now today. I'm speaking over every dry bone in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare it. I decree it. And we ain't taking no for an answer, Jesus, because you had to come correct in the month of July. You got to come correct in the year 2019 because we know that you're doing a new thing, but you're doing it right now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a word that God spoke to me, my brothers, my sisters. And I believe that this word today is going to be a message today. It's going to go viral. It's going to help a lot of people because God told me that he want to do a new thing for this generation. He want to do a new thing. He want people to he want people to praise him. He want people to worship him. He want people to acknowledge him. But how can God can do a new thing when hate is the new thing? Jealousy is the new thing. Backstabbing, betraying is the new thing. That's what's going on right now today. But Jesus, he want to do a new thing. But how can he do that with so much hate going on? How? Stay tuned. This message might be for you today. Amen? Amen. Before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our head and the Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Amen? Amen. Oh, Heaven and the Father God, I can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word. I can't thank you for this anointing message. I just can't thank you enough for the air that we was able to breathe right now today, Jesus. I just can't thank you for your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank you for our health right now and our strength right now. I just can't thank you for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, Jesus. The clothes and shoes that you put on our back. I just can't thank you how you're providing. I just can't thank you how you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because right now you have your righteous right hand that's touching us right now today, that's lifting us up right now today, that's guiding us and also directing us right now today. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because how you're moving mountains on our behalf right now today. Glory to God. I can't thank you for the Holy Spirit right now. I can't thank you for your angels that's joining us right now for praise and worship. I can't thank you for all my brothers, all my sisters, every young man, every young lady around the world, around the globe, around the universe that's part of today's service right now. That's, that's, what, that's with me and with the angels and with the Holy Spirit by giving you the thanks, praise, and glory. I can't thank you enough for our blessing right now, our breakthrough right now, our anointing right now, our deliverance right now. I can't thank you for the open doors right now. I can't thank you for the door that you have closed right now. I can't thank you for the help right now. I can't thank you for the more than enough, the overflow, the abundance of rain. I can't thank you for my phone call I received right now. My email, that text message, that help you better receive. 
I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I said, I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. Jesus, I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith, my trust, my hope in you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out of you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm always on my knees every day and every night, just praying and wishing for a change, wishing for my miracle, Father God, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. Glory to God. Can't thank you enough. Jesus said he want to do a new thing. He said he's looking for a generation so he can come in and do a new thing. But this generation don't want a new thing. The only thing that's going on in this generation right here is hate. It's jealousy. Snitching has become the new generation. Hating has become the new thing. Setting people up has become the new thing. Killing people has become the new thing. Backstabbing people has become the new thing. Don't want to help the other person up has been coming the new thing. So how could Jesus come in and do a new thing when hate is a new thing? When lying is the new thing? When backstabbing is the new thing? When betrayal is the new thing? When every time you turn on your news, only thing you see is crime. Every time you turn your news, you see people getting robbed. You see people getting set up because that's the new thing that's going on in this generation. Nobody's praising Jesus in this generation. Nobody's seeking him the way they need to seek him in this generation. People right now, the church is come a multi-billion dollar business in this generation. Church and what it used to be. Jesus want to come through and do a new thing in the church, but some of the pastors don't want Jesus in the church because it's too much money involved. That's the new thing that's going on right now today. But it didn't start right here. This has been going on years and years and years ago. Look at Cain and Abel. Cain hated his own brother. He was hate then, I wouldn't. Look at Saul. Then he hated David. He hated the man so much he tried to get the man killed. Look at Job. His own wife told him to curse God and die. So this hate has been going on for, for quite some time. It is the start of the day. It's been going on. But somebody got to stand up and break the curse so God can come in and do a new thing. If you turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 through 20. The word of God said, when you forget about the former things, a lot of you right now today, you can't forget about the former things because whatever that you did 20 years ago, you're still talking about today like you just did it yesterday. What you did 20 years ago, that was 20 years ago. Why are you still holding on to it like you just did it today, like you was part of it today? He said, then don't dwell on the past. A lot of you right now today, the reason why you can't go because you still hold on to past hurt past rejection what somebody did to you years ago but you have thought that somebody did it today but then he said I want to do a new thing he can't do a new thing if you still if you still dwell in the past he said you can't do a new thing if you still trying to if you still talking about what you did 30 years ago and like you did it today he want to come in and do a new thing some of y'all got a seed in your hand and the seed that you got, the reason why you can't plant it, because you dead and also the seed is dead. The 
only that your seed can grow, the only that your seed can spring up, if you say, you know what, I'm not dwelling on the past no more, I'm forgetting about the former things, so now I'm going to plant this dead seed right here, I'm going to speak life over this seed, I'm going to have faith over this seed, I'm going to have trust over this seed, and I'm going to have hope in this seed, and let the seed grow. But a lot of y'all right now today, you still hold on to that same dead seed that you had in your hand, that you had in your pocket, that you had in your shoebox over 20, 30 years ago. Because you don't want to plan because you still caught up in the past. You still dwelling what you did 20, 30 years ago. Come on, my brothers and my sisters. Because hate is the new thing. Some of y'all hate somebody so bad because somebody came up. And instead of you saying congratulations, my brothers, instead of saying congratulations, my sisters, I'm proud of you right now today. A lot of you ain't doing that. Hate has become the new thing. Not Jesus doing the new thing. Hate has become the new thing. When are you going to break that curse? And I, I'm not being racist or anything like that. And it start and it's, it's more with my own, my own kind, the black people. I'm keeping it real with you. I ain't sugarcoating it. Because every time you turn on the news, what do you see? Black on black crime. Black on black robbers. Black on black people setting up. You don't see no other race when they're doing that but our kind. But we have the audacity to sit there and say, oh, the white man holding his back. The white man take, no, the white man doing that. You doing that to yourself. Stop lying. Quit hating on your one another and help each other out. God don't see color. He don't see race because at the end of the day, we all bleed the same blood. We all trying to get to the same place. So don't put that on another race when it's mostly it's you. You hate to see somebody else moving past you. You don't like to see somebody else moving up. You're ready to knock them down, talk bad about them, instead of trying to uplift them up. But Jesus said he wouldn't do a new thing. My question, how can Jesus do a new thing when hate is the new thing? Jealousy is the new thing. Competing with, with one another is the new thing. Lying is the new thing. Killing is the new thing. Raping is the new thing. Snitching on one another is the new thing now. But Jesus want to come and do a new thing. Isn't y'all ready for Jesus to come through to do a new thing in your life? I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for God to come through the, for a generation. Because he said he's been looking for a generation. He's been looking, he's been looking, but still he hasn't found it yet. And the reason why he ain't found it yet is because so much hate in the world. So much jealousy in the world. So much evilness in the world. But he's looking for a generation who's going to praise him. Who's going to worship him. Who's going to shout his holy name. Who's not going to be ashamed to boast about his name. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's what Jesus is talking about. He's going to do a new thing. Are you willing to give God the thanks? Are you willing to give him the praise? Are you willing to give him the glory? Are you waiting like I can't wait for Jesus to come for a generation so everybody can know who he is? Because that's what I'm waiting on. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for that for a long time. I'm tired of this generation right here. I want to see the new generation who will know about Jesus. Who going to understand about Jesus. Who going to understand about his words. Who also going to understand about his promises and what he stands for. That's the generation I'm waiting on. And that's the generation that Jesus is waiting on so he can do a new thing. I know this. Well, let's turn your Bible to Psalms 145. And we're going to read verses 4 through 6. That's Psalms 145. And we're going to read verses 4 through 6. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Excuse me. Amen. God bless you. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful words. They will tell of the power of your awesome words. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich and love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. And all you have made will be praised you, O Lord. Your saints will astall you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. And that's what Jesus is with now. 
He want to do a new thing. He want people to know who is people going to sing, who going to praise him, who going to say, who going to be so willing to tell God about his, his awesome words and his powerful and how gracious he is, how loved he is, how wonderful he is, how magnificent, how God can come in and is coming in your life and do a new thing, how God can come in and turn things around. I am waiting on that because Jesus said he want to do a new thing, but hate is the new thing now. It's so much hate, they blocking the praise down. It's so much hate, they blocking how wonderful and how majestic and how glorious our Heavenly Father, our, our Heavenly Father God is because so much hate is right there in the middle of it. A lot of people don't know how wonderful, how, how gracious, how loved, how merciful God is. A lot of people don't understand how God can work and how God can change things around in a second is because too much hate in the midst of it, if you move that hate out of the way, if you plant that dead seed that God has given you and plant in the ground, the word of God said it will spring up. And the only thing that spring up is the seed that you have planted, but the seed that you planted was a dead seed, but you spoke life over that seed. That you spoke prosperity on that seed. That you had faith and trust and hope in that seed. Now that seed is growing up because God wants to do a new thing. But God can't do a new thing because some of y'all is walking in the dead sea. Because you are the dead sea. Because you have too much hate inside of you. You got too much jealousy inside of you. You have too much anger inside of you. You talk about people too much. You slander people's name too much. But Jesus wanna do a new thing. I don't know about you today, my brothers. I don't know about you today, my sisters. But Jesus is waiting on a generation. He's been looking for a generation. When that generation gonna come, I don't know. But right now, this generation right here, hate has become the new generation. Lies have become the new generation. Killing has become the new generation. Snitching on one another has become the new generation. Compete with one another has become the new generation. That's why a lot of people don't know about God. That's why a lot of people don't know about his works. That's why a lot of people don't know about his, his promises. It's because too much hate in the world. Too much envy in the world. Too much jealousy in the world. Too much slander in the world. If you get rid of all that, Jesus can come in and do a new thing. The whole world will praise him. The whole world would glorify him. The whole world would shout at his holy name. The whole world would sing and praise Jesus each and every day if you get rid of the hate. The hate is not doing nothing for you. Did it do something for Cain? No. Did it do something for Saul? No. What did it do to him? Nothing. Some of y'all hate your own brothers because your brother believes in something. Some of y'all hate your own sister because she believes in something. Even some of y'all family members hate another family member because they want to be something different that the family never been. So-called in-laws hate you because you want to be something better. So-called friends hate you because you got tired playing the same circle because you got tired look, um, dwelling in the past. You forgot about the former things. Now they mad at you. Now they hating on you. Now they talking bad about you. You see my point? Somebody else know what I'm talking about. Hate is the new thing now. When Jesus said he want to do a new thing. But hate is the new thing. Jealousy is the new thing right now. My brothers, my sisters, stop the hating. Stop the jealousy. Stop the killing. Stop the raping. Stop the robbing. Stop snitching. Stop backstabbing. Just stop everything if you know it's not part of God's will. I want you to stop everything right now if you know it's not part of God's will so God can come in and do a new thing in every last one of his sons and every last one of his daughters so the whole world can sing to him so the whole world can praise to him so everybody can boast about his holy name so everybody know how majestic, how loving, how grateful, how merciful our Heavenly Father God is. Stop it right now. Let it come to an end right now. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. That's why I only like watching the news. Because every time you turn on the news, the first thing that you see on there, another black man killing another black man. Another black man shooting another black man. Another black man robbing another black man. And we had the dash to sit there and say, another race is holding us back. Another race is doing this. No. 
it is, it is us who's doing it to, it to ourselves. You can't blame no other race doing it but ourselves. We are doing that. It is, it's our race keeps saying the N-word when we don't like what another race calls the N-word. Come on now. You might well let them call you the N-word too because you saying to each you saying to you saying it to each other. So why not let the other race say it to you? Stop it. Let it come to an end right now today. Because Jesus gave me a word right now today. The point I'm making right now. Jesus is looking for a generation. So he can come in and do a new thing. Are you willing? Are you on board like myself? Are you willing to scream Jesus' name right now? Are you willing to tell everybody about Jesus? Are you willing to boast about his holy name right now? Are you willing to tell your friends, your neighbors, how merciful, how loving, how giving, how majestic, how, how faithful our heavenly Father God is? Because I am, thank you, Jesus. I've been waiting on Jesus. I've been waiting, I've been waiting. And Jesus said he's waiting for the generation. He's waiting right now. Because God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. He is so faithful. He is so merciful. He is so kind. You can count on him. You can depend on him. Glory, hallelujah. There's nothing that Jesus won't do for neither one of us right now. That's why it's so important that he want to do a new thing. He want to do something that's going to blow your mind. He want to do something that you will never thought, that you will imagine, that you will be, that you are able, that you will do. That's what Jesus is talking about when he said he want to do a new thing. Let Jesus do his work. Let Jesus do his job. Come on, generation. Somebody got to start. Somebody got to be on board with me right now. I don't know who it is, but I'm with you. Jesus with me. Jesus my everything. Hate has become a new thing. Jealousy has become a new thing. And you're blocking everything out because Jesus wants to do a new thing. Amen? Amen. I hope that this word, I hope that this message today was beneficial and helpful to us about today. And if it was, I want you to give Jesus the thanks right now. I want you to give Jesus the praise and I want you to give Jesus the glory. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you. To come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Willis.LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek Him, always praise Him, always honor Him. Continue to pray for one another, and always continue to pray. Never give up. Because Jesus want to do a new thing. Let's get rid of this hate, my brothers. Let's get rid of this jealousy, my brothers and sisters. Let's get rid of this image. Let's get rid of this, this, this crime that we see every day on the news. This killing, this robbing, this snitching, this backstabbing. This, we got to stop this. Because hate is the new thing now. I'm just calling it how it is. That's what, exactly what it is. This, in this generation, hate is the new thing. When Jesus want to do a new thing. Come on now. It's been a stay on tea. I love y'all. Y'all stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. God bless you. Amen.